I'm here to talk about a divide in this country. There are many of them, but a divide we don't talk often enough about. And it's a divide that separates these people and these people. <laughs> these folks are digital natives. That means that they're born into a hyper-connected world, and they believe everything should be on demand in real time. These folks, not so much. These folks are digital immigrants who have come to this not when the technology that's popular today, well, they were born before today's popular technology was available. They were born, in fact, before the folks who founded the technology were born, and sometimes before their parents were born. It's the digital natives that everybody covets, advertisers, marketers, employers. And the reason they want digital natives to work with them and for them is because digital natives are fearless. They embrace technology and they love technology. But let's not forget the digital immigrants. Digital immigrants bring something else to the table. They bring perspective, history, understanding, and they know the potential and the pitfalls of technology. Digital natives only know the potential of technology. Now, I bring an unusual perspective to this because I am a digital immigrant, but I'm also an actual immigrant. My wife and I, you can follow her, she's at Rupa online. Uh, she and I became citizens last year, and yes, we live tweeted the entire thing, and we had our own hashtag for our session uh, at the citizenship ceremony. And coming as an immigrant, we have a different perspective about America. I believe that I understand and love and appreciate this country more than many native-born folks in the United States and in this city. And what happens is, oh, by the way, I call this photograph Bollywood Kiss American style. <laughs> this was seconds after we became citizens. And immigrants ask questions. Immigrants are unsure. Immigrants don't take anything for granted. Digital natives and digital immigrant and, and native-born uh, folks in New York and elsewhere take lots of things for granted. Actual immigrants have to open a map. Actual immigrants have to look at a manual. A digital native does not ever look at a manual. I arrived in the United States after living in cities and countries like Tokyo, Japan, and Moscow in the Soviet Union. And I arrived at PS6. And I hope you all know this artist who does all the buildings in NewYork.com. He's absolutely spectacular work that he does. And he's drawing every building in New York. And this is a building that's one block away from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And we had zero technology. But my mom forced me to take a class to learn how to touch type on an old computer. And she has no idea how much that meant to me and meant to my career. I would eventually leave PS6 and end up in the Fiji Islands in high school. It's as great as it sounds. But in high school, we had zero technology. My mom again forced me to take a course in basic programming. Some of you may not know, but basic isn't just basic with a lowercase b, but basic is an acronym for a type of computer language. And I got a certificate and not much else. Today, everybody thinks about selfies. Well, I got to tell you, I'd like to claim to have been an early selfie taker. <laughs> That's me at 16. If any of you have a selfie from before 1986, I'd love to see it. Let's, let's, it's a kind of challenge. Let's see if you have that. I would leave Fiji and move to the United States and teach at Columbia Journalism School for two decades. And the only way I was able to teach a whole bunch of digital natives was because I understood where technology came from and where it was going. How else could I teach someone like Lam Tui Vo, who you met this morning on the stage, our first speaker. She was my student, I was so proud of her. Wasn't she awesome? And all our speakers so far. And the only reason she paid all that money to come to Columbia and work with all us old fogies was because she understood the technology. We gave her context. We gave her understanding. And she's just taken it and gone so far ahead of us. I, at, at Columbia, 
now I talk a lot about social media, but in the 90s, I used to talk about new things like email and blogging and the web and social, and you need to learn all these things. One of the things I learned at Columbia Journalism School, I learned from a digital immigrant. He's the son of actual immigrants from Scandinavia, and he likes to say that he grew up in a place of white people eating white food off white plates. And he coined a wonderful term that it, I've made it my mission to teach the world. And that's a term called tradigital. And tradigital is a combination of the traditional and the digital. And what this means is that you are great at whatever, you, at whatever industry you're in, you understand the traditional parts of it, all the skills, all the values, but what you bring to the table are also the new skills. You have a digital overlay, but notice that the word traditional is first. And I'm so honored, ladies and gentlemen, that after he retired, after teaching at the journalism school, and on his 60th wedding anniversary, Professor Sig Gisler is here today. Sig, would you stand for a second? <laughs> By the way, Sig Gisler, digital immigrant, joined Twitter in 2008. We've got to get him tweeting more, so follow him at S. Gisler, and you will, get, you will see more tweets. He ran the Pulitzer Prizes, and he had more of a digital mindset than anybody I ever taught with, no matter what age. And so that tells you a digital mindset is not about where you come from or your age, but what you can do. I'm not here to say that digital immigrants are better than digital natives, and certainly not in this room, because I'll get stoned. I'm here to tell you, let's look at each individual one at a time, and consider them, what do they bring to the table? I keep this in mind when I'm hiring. And by the way, at the Met, in our digital media department, we have nine job openings right now. <laughs> and what we do is we're looking to see what kind of person, no matter the, what the age is, but what do they bring to the table? And what I would like all of you to think about is, as I leave you with this last slide, this was taken at 8.40 p.m. on the number two train on Thursday night. And I love this photograph because you're seeing all these people together, seven people, all of them with a device. Even the two people who are not on a device are actually holding the device ready to go at any second. And I want you to train your eye on this lady who is, who is crushing some candy and killing Candy Crush over here, right? Do you all see her? And what I love about her is that she's in her easily 50s, maybe older, and I would ask all of you to think about this, that there's a decent chance that even though she's a digital immigrant, she understands technology and the role of it in our lives as much as anybody on that train and anybody in this room. Thank you very much.